Well, hey everyone, it's me, Eric Kimball, back here with another video, and today I'm going to show you how to cut small circles on the table saw. Several videos back, I showed how to cut large circles on the table saw, and I used this quickly made but very adequate jig. And I could make the small circles with that fixture, but instead I'm going to make them here on my sliding crosscut uh, sled. This is a crosscut sled for my table saw. If you've watched my videos, you have seen this sled in the past and you know that I've had this for many years. It's a reliable old uh, crosscut sled that I didn't put a lot of effort into making, but it cuts square. It provides me with a work surface. Essential tool, if you ask me, for a table saw. And yeah, you can make smaller uh, ones and that are a little bit more uh, sophisticated looking, but hey, this does it. It's kind of like the imperial measurement system as opposed to metric. This gets it done. That's another topic, isn't it? I want to cut uh, circles in this 1 8 inch PVC plastic, and I want them to be around four inches. So what I have done is I have found the center of this, you know, crossed lines, corner to corner, found the center, drilled a hole for my screw to go into. And then here on the table, two inches, I drilled into this uh, crosscut sled, which the bottom is one half inch thick. I drilled in just a little so that I could index into that. And what I'm going to do is take a screw, get the screw into the uh, plastic in the center, and then I'm going to index into that little eighth inch hole I made, and then I'm gonna screw it down. Just like that, and I can uh, still turn it. It's not down so tight that I can't, but it's down uh, tight enough where th there's no jiggle, no back and forth jiggle. You don't want that because your circle may not come out exactly true. By the way, um, I'm cutting two of these for a project that is upcoming. I'll be showing you something you've probably never seen before. You want to hold your piece firmly as you go through and come back before turning it. And of course, you're gonna keep your fingers away from the blade, right? <laughs> And there we have it. Alrighty, so I actually made three of those. They're so easy and they're so fun to make. I need two for the upcoming project, but it's always good to have a spare. And now I am cutting more circles, this time out of three quarter inch plywood. And these are 14 inches in diameter. So I've measured seven inches from the blade. This is again for another upcoming project that you will be seeing. We'll just go through this real quick. There we go. I am now in my more comfortable, warmer, cozy little workshop, and I wanna show you that I made three of these PVC circles, and then I made four of these 14 inch by three quarter inch diameter circles for an upcoming project. No, they're not wheels or tires. It's something else, something I've been thinking about for years, and I'm finally going to do, and you will see it right here on this channel. But I also made something else that I wanna show you, and that is this right here. This is a cover, and it's three quarter inch plywood here, and one uh, quarter inch plywood on the bottom. And I made this for a special purpose. Right here is the special purpose. This is a tall pail. It is a pail that I've had for many years. I'll show you what it looked like right here before I cleaned it up. It held eggnog base. And this is dated 1997. And I have a few of these. We used to store wheat in them in the basement when my 
my wife made bread and we ground wheat for the bread. But I cleaned it up like you see right here and I made this cover to fit very precisely on the top so it doesn't jiggle around. It fits very good and I have notches. See the two notches here and here? Those notches are there so that I can lift the handle and it will index right into there and hold. Okay, now I'll tell you a couple things about this before I tell you what it's actually for. To put the quarter inch uh, centered on the three quarter inch, I used an awl, like you can see in this picture right here, and I glued the quarter inch to the three quarter inch and clamped it as, as you can see there. Now this handle is a unique and distinctive old handle. I bought it at an estate sale. That's what it looked like. And uh, this is the beauty of estate sales. You've heard me say it before. I'll say it again, I'm sure. Go to estate sales and, uh, you know, where there's old tools in the barn, in the garage, in the basement, and just fill up your box with the tools, the hardware, whatever you can find that you might need. And I was going to sell these on eBay. I do sell on eBay, but I decided, wow, that's perfect. The alternative would be to buy something like this for like seven or eight bucks. I bought this a while ago for another project and it's just been hanging here in my shop. Why use that when I can use these? And these basically cost me nothing because I, I typically fill up my canvas tote or a box or whatever and get a good price on the whole lot at these estate sales. These screws right here, I wanna point out, are flatheads with a slot. They're not modern screws, they're just short three quarter inch screws. And again, I picked those up in an estate sale. I don't even know if you can buy screws like that, but they were perfect for holding this handle on this lid. So now why did I make these circles for this handle, for this bucket like that? Moment of truth. You're gonna find out right now, this is my new cat food bucket. It's about time, I've thought about this for years. There we go. Cat food bucket, very practical. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you in the next video.